Now we're going to go into taxes. And what we're going to talk about is the difference, what imputed rent is, the mortgage interest deduction, property tax deductions, and profits from home sales. And yes, that's capital gains, the capital gains exemption. If you understand this, you know this, move on, go to the next chapter. Understand that I'm not a tax professional. If you have questions specific to these in your scenario, talk to your tax professional. If you don't have one, I have a pocketbook full of tax people that understand tax laws far better than me. I'm not a CPA. I'm not a licensed lend, uh, tax professional. You want to talk to somebody that really knows the ins and outs of this. Okay. Imputed rent. So I always knew that what this meant, but I didn't know that it was a defined term. Imputed rent basically means if you're a renter right now and you're paying $2,500 a month, that money goes to your landlord. And the landlord's taking that money and either using it to pad his pocket or paying his mortgage, his property tax, and his insurance. So you're not getting the full benefit of, of living at that one house. You also don't get tax benefits. You don't get to write off the the mortgage uh, the mortgage interest. You don't get to write off the property taxes. So that's the last opportunity you're giving your landlord if you're renting a house, and that's called imputed rent. If you're so the difference between rent and mortgage is your mortgage is going to be more expensive, but you also have write offs. So at the end of the year it will kind of equal out to what you're currently paying in rent. Depends on your scenario, okay? So understand that it's going to totally depend on your scenario. But if you're paying $2,500, you go up to $3,500, all the tax benefits will roughly even out. As a matter of fact, you might get a little bit more as a, ta as a tax benefit. It's not like a huge thing like it was back in the 80s and 90s. You'll probably probably be able to enjoy maybe a thousand, maybe $1,500 tax benefit just from that. But then you're also building equity into your house by paying down the mortgage. And you have a place where you won't get evicted. And you, if something breaks, you can fix it or you have to fix it yourself, but you don't have to wait for your landlord to fix it. Like, let's say your water heater goes out and they're like, well, too bad, you fix it and we'll take care of it later on or you have a squeaky floor or your windows rattle or you don't have air conditioning. Those are things that you're not going to pay for to put into that house. If you're renting it, that's a lost, lost opportunity for you because if you're in a house that doesn't have air conditioning, it's going to be hot and sweaty in the summer, you know, maybe three, four year, days a year lately. It's been a lot, a lot more, but um, you lose that enjoyment. If you own your house, you can pay to have uh, air conditioning put in your house. And that's a benefit. Tax deductions. Again, I'm not a professional. Talk to your tax professional. Work out your scenarios with your tax professional based on your current income. And if I bought a house, how much, how much money would I get back at the end of the year? That kind of thing. So you understand a little bit more about how you fit, how your scenario fits into, into these ideas. Um, so if you bought a million dollar house and you put 20% down, you have an $800,000 loan, your monthly mortgage would be $3,373. I think that was at 4% or 3.5%. And your property taxes insurance is $1,000 and $250, maybe $150, depending on which, which insurance company you work with. You get to write off interest and property tax you used to be able to write off some pmi mortgage insurance but not home insurance so just take that into account but in the scenario you're looking at about 35 36 maybe even thirty-seven thousand dollars that you can take as a tax deduction every year and you're building principal into your house over the next 10 years, you're going to have, you know, 20% of your mortgage paid off. And this example uh, talks about capital gains and how you can enjoy uh, building wealth when you buy real estate. 
and this is the power of real estate right here. When you buy a house, you not only pay down the principal of the loan by living there, or you have your, your renters pay down that, that mortgage, you also get to see an increase in value. And especially here in San Jose, we tend to see on average about 8% good or bad over year over year, right? In 2008, 2009, it went down a little bit, but a hockey stick back up. If you did a straight line, or if you did a straight line graph chart over the last 100 years, you'd see it's about 8%. So you could pretty much bet on it. I wouldn't bet on it, but uh, I would definitely consider the risk. In this example right here, you bought your house for a million dollars, and the acquisition cost is anywhere from fifteen and thirty thousand dollars, you know, depending. We'll go into that when we get into the net sheet. Um, any kind of improvements that you do to the house, like let's say you put a hundred thousand dollar kitchen in, you put a fifteen thousand dollar HVAC system in there, you put twenty five thousand dollars worth of windows and and doors in, new floor, what have you, right? Anything like that, keep your receipts because when you go to sell it, the IRS is going to let you adjust your tax basis or your cost basis of that house. So your purchase price is your actual cost basis, but all those other numbers that you see down below, those add to your cost basis. So when you buy a million dollar house and you wait a few years and it's worth 1.6, you turn around and sell it, you have all those different costs that you can add to it. Now you have something for right now, we have the capital gains exemption and that's $250,000 per person, or if it's a couple, it's $500,000 off of that. And in this scenario, you take that off and you have to report capital gains. The capital gains can be anywhere from you know 10 to 15%. It could be more. It, it's, it depends on your income at the time. Again, talk to your tax professional because I don't know your scenario. I'm not a tax professional. Contact a tax professional and understand what your scenario is when you go to sell your house.